<laughs> Nakaminis ka kasi. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon to each and everyone. As said, we're quite few, so let's try to make the most out of it. If you know, I'm working with the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics based in India. So we're, j let me just plug a little bit about the institution. We're, we're one of the 15 centers of this consultative group for international agricultural research. So in the Philippines, you have IRI, in India, you have ICRISA. In Syria, you have um, uh, ICARDA, and so other several um, organizations. And this is under the uh, World Bank. Okay, so it has strong link with the World Bank. And I have to say that the uh, most of these uh, 15 centers are focused or do have projects in in uh, on climate change, and of which. Uh, one of the topics being discussed as well as on g gender sensitivity and gender issues. Now, uh, I'd like to point out earlier that in most of the presentations for the last two days, there have been strong mention of research and development in agriculture, but sad to say that there was not much discussion on it. And I think it's this is one opportunity, and I appreciate this, because then I, I'm able to articulate exactly what sort of activities is going on in, in these 15 centers of which climate change is one of the topics. Okay? Oh, what happened? Okay. I will discuss this. So Sorry. I have a question. Before your presentation, I want to say that uh, we should consider the treats for the women in disasters. How or what, what factors? Yeah, has effects on women in disasters. Yeah, as you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, will, it, will it will come out. out. It will come out in the presentation. Okay. So I won't deal much on this because this slide has been presented earlier and it's just simply saying to you that there are changes in temperature, sea level, and northern hemisphere snow cover that has been presented two days back. Okay. Indeed. There is no doubt that climate change is the greatest challenge humanity faces. There is no contention on that. With the advent of satellite measurements as early as 1979, there are strong evidences of warming that are quite apparent in both in oceans as well as in landforms. Okay? Obviously, as most of the presentations have been mentioning, Climate change results in devastating situations like heavy precipitation, more intense and longer droughts, and these have caused heavy burden on women, which you can see in a little while. In India, we have experienced effects of climate change, and I have to say that heavy rains in Indian metros are not normal, especially in 2006. Yeah, some of my colleagues from India would, would attest to that. Now, um, who then are the most vulnerable? That has also been tackled yesterday. Clearly, the answer is obvious. The developing countries are the most vulnerable because of inadequate technology, institutional capacity, know-how and education, and of course, largely financial capacity. It follows that impacts are worse at this juncture. Let me inform you that one of the most sensitive sectors affected by climate change is agriculture. There's no denial of that. And so, let me just focus to you now the research and development focus of ICRISA, which is working in the semi-arid tropics. If you look at the entire world, most of which are affected really by, by uh, lack of water or lack of moisture. And so these areas, the semi-arid tropics, is where one-sixth of the world population and where more than 500 million of the world's poorest of the poor resides. Okay? The sub environment is basically very marginal. Climate is erratic, soils are very poor and infertile, and infrastructure like irrigation are inadequate or in most cases absent. In India, because of too much population, the burden is even worse. Okay? With this, ICRISAT's mandate in the summer arid tropics has to be in sync with the topic of climate change. So we have crafted what we call operational research strategy to climate change. We have short term to medium term, which is addressing towards the provision of help to cope with current rainfall variability. We have medium to, medium to longer term, 
which is concerned with adapting ma our mandate crops to grow in a warmer environment. So we're working on five crops. We have pigeon pea, we have sorghum, we have groundnut, we have a chickpea, and we have pearl millet. So we're trying to do this, we're trying to um, do some work on which on these crops can be grown in warmer areas. And briefly, this is all about breeding, okay? I won't build much on breeding, but I'm sure you know this, or crop improvement. But before explaining this further, let us see the environment of the sub farmer. Okay. The sub farmer of India is aptly described by this statement. He is born in death, he lives in death, and he dies in death. That's how difficult the, uh, the Indian farmer is. And this is because of interlocking constraints. He has to grapple with these constraints such as severe land degradation, erratic rainfall, poor infrastructure, and even unfavorable policies. There is also the problem on poor dissemination of improved technologies. ICRISAC has made some headway on providing a well package of information that is readily understood and accessed by farmers. I have to say that in India in general, this is one of the biggest efforts being made by the government. Providing access to information, that's precisely, we even have what we call farmers call centers now. And I'm very happy, this is really a big thing in India, and maybe this is something worth emulating or worth considering in whatever declarations we're making. The nature of our knowledge management and sharing emphasizes the role of women and the utilization of ICT mediated applications. There is not much discussion on this in, in the past three days, I mean, past three days, and I have to say that this might be worth considering. Okay. Equisat believes in the successful adaptation strategy that reflects the use of the best information, teamwork, and sharing. Let me point out before all of you that we see GIAR centers, and ICRISAC for that matter has to be a key partner to this endeavor. I think in whatever activity we're talking, it's a must that we should include also the R&D activities of agriculture so that we can have some insights and learnings and that we can emulate or maybe we can adapt. If we are to dissect or scrutinize adaptation strategies at farmer's disposal, there is what we call farm level adaptations such as crop rotation, crop diversification. We also have social adaptation like social networks. In India, we have now self-help <coughs> groups for women and community projects. We also have what we call technological adaptation like micro-irrigation and water harvesting. And we have basically institutional and policy adaptations like water allocation and regulation of local institutions. In all these types of adaptation, women's propensity in circumstances of climate uncertainty is remarkable. We have been discussing this since the first day, okay? And this legitimizes all the more for their inclusion in the debate or in the discussions on climate change. In our community watershed projects, for instance, okay, women pioneered the biodiesel enterprise using Pongamia. Pongamia is a, um, is a tree that can fix nitrogen and that it can you know, sequester carbon and this is something very important, okay? In, in West and Southern Africa, women uh, promoted microdosing wherein we make use only of small cup, you know, you know the, 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 the bottle cover of Coca-Cola or uh, any soft drink.